Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today, instead of starting with my ugly mug, we start with this full image of the globe of the Earth. This is taken from the Himawari 8 satellite, and I downloaded this from the internet with a source resolution of 121 megapixels. It is 11,000 by 11,000 pixels, and it basically is the state of the art in weather observation. And of course, this is looking at Japan because Himawari is a Japanese satellite. However, the camera on it is actually developed by Harris in the United States. It's called the Advanced Baseline Imager, and it's what's going into the fourth generation of the GOES satellites. That is the Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite. They've been launching these satellites since the 1970s, and today the next one is going up on a an Atlas V in a 541 configuration. That is a 5 meter fairing with four solid rocket boosters and one RL10 engine on the Centaur upper stage. You know, these images are absolutely stunning, and you can download these from the internet. You can have a, set your screensaver up to capture these things in real time. And I kind of wanted to talk about the technology behind these and how they're generated. These full globe images are being taken every 10 minutes by the Himawari 8 satellite. There's actually two Himawari satellites, but number 9 is basically sitting out there as a hot spare should something happen to number 8. I made this video a while back based on the same data, just downloading the, the 5K versions, so that's 5,500 pixels square, and then convert it into a video. Now, YouTube actually converts that to an 8K video, which is the highest resolution they support. However, of course, you've got to realize that that is less than half the linear dimension of the full 11K resolution version. Like, the, the resolution on this is amazing, and if you go in and you look in the static images, you can actually see the oblateness of the globe, right? So you can see that the dimension in, from north to south is shorter than the dimension from east to west. But things you can actually see on this video are during the daytime, you can see the full color globe, that's from the visible bands, but when nighttime comes around, you can still see the clouds, and that's because it's using infrared bands that are essentially being emitted by the surface. You can also see a flicker around midnight, that's when the sun would basically pass through the frame of the camera, and the camera can't point too near the sun, so of course they edit those chunks out to stop the camera damaging itself. So the hardware that is taking this image is the Advanced Baseline Imager, and it's basically the la latest generation. It is now imaging in 16 different bands, and the resolution of the image depends upon the band. So the highest resolution visual data is coming down at a half kilometer resolution. Uh, some of the other stuff is coming down at one kilometer, and the lowest frequency thermal data is coming down at two kilometers resolution. That resolution is twice as good as the third generation GOES satellites, which are being replaced. But not only that, it's taking 16 bands versus 6 different wavelengths, and it's doing it in 10 minutes instead of 26 minutes that it used to take. Now, the US satellites are actually going to use a different scanning system. They're only going to get a full globe image every 15 minutes. And the reason they're going to do this is because it gives them five minutes to kind of do other things. In particular, they want to be able to image the whole of the continental US at higher temporal frequency. That means they're going to scan it faster so they can get more detail on cloud motions. So interspersed in the scanning of the full globe, they're going to scan the continental US five or three times. That means once every five minutes on average. Also, you can see that storm system just off the coast of Mexico. That's being scanned every 30 seconds. Now, they can actually track up to two different storm systems. They can either track one at 30 second resolution or two at one minute resolution. So you have that, you have the full globe every 15 minutes and continental US every five minutes. So in more technical terms, this is the imaging timetable that shows you all the different observations that go on during that 15 minute window. And then of course it repeats it after this. The actual scanning is performed by two different mirrors. One moves in the north to south axis and the other moves east to west. Then that light is focused by a four mirror telescope and finally split over to three different camera systems using a pair of beam splitters. 
The cameras themselves are all linear imagers. They're basically being scanned across the target and that's how you build a two-dimensional image. There's different filters over different segments so they each, different, each have uh, different band passes. And of course all of these 16 band passes are optimized to do different things. Because of course, while we as nerds appreciate these pictures for their beauty, these are actually meteorological satellites. We The data that comes down is very important in predicting weather and other things. For example, this sequence shows wildfires in Northern California from last year. And from a couple of weeks ago, this is the eruption of Mount Sinabung in uh, Indonesia. This is of course from the Himawari satellite and that means every frame is 10 minutes apart. But you can really see the improvements in time resolution compared to the previous generation of the GOES satellites. This is the eye of Hurricane Irma in all its awesome glory. And if that looks pretty powerful, just spare a thought for the NOAA pilots who would be flying through the eye of that to collect more meteorological data from inside the hurricane itself. You can go to NOAA's YouTube channel and it is full of these kind of videos. And the University of Wisconsin-Madison put together this video showing the eclipse passing over the continental US. But there's a second instrument on the GOES spacecraft that wasn't on Himamari. That is the geostationary lightning mapper. Now this is a lower resolution telescope which is only able to get uh, about 8 kilometer resolution. But uh, it is able, able to take a full disk image very quickly. And using that it is able to actually see the effects of lightning in real time. And this of course combines with all the other meteorological data to get an idea of just how much energy is in some of these storms. So the satellite that's currently in space was originally launched as GOES-R, now it's GOES-16. It sits about 70 degree west of the meridian in a geostationary orbit. GOES-S is launching today and it'll eventually take over from GOES-West which will be at about 135 degrees west, covering the west coast and, of course, the Pacific Islands. But, of course, that means that the launch today is going to have weather data from this new generation of spacecraft, which is kind of cool. Or maybe it's hot. I mean, I don't really know when weather's involved. What I do know is that the technology required to pull down the images is amazing. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>